All right, the costume is as done as going to get. I'd set myself a deadline of Friday. I just, if I wanted to be done, that's when I put pencils down. So I'm gonna go through this costume, the time it took, the cost it took, what it's like in its current state, the shortcuts I took, and kind of the things I had to concede to get it done on time. So the costume was Erdenbrack Glass, the Wild Hunt King from the book series, video game series, now Netflix TV show, The Witcher. I spent on this costume $30 in foam formats. All the armor, helmet, sword, everything is made out of foam formats. I also spent, let's see, $5 more on craft foam. I already had some craft foam on hand. Unfortunately, I ran out like the day before. I spent $21 in Plasti Dip paint to coat all the foam. I spent an additional $7 for silver spray paint, uh, kind of a pewter uh, hammered finish. I spent $7 on a burgundy spray paint that I never used because I just didn't get there. And I had silver spray paint for the sword blade that I already had on hand. That would have been an additional $7. I had a little bit of leather that I had on hand. And for the mask, I had bought a mask for $10. I probably spent $20, $25 in plastic on vacuum forming a second mask when I could have used one I spent $10 on. And so that is what I spent on this costume. I, for, I have a long sleeve, gray undershirt, and black pants that I wore under it. So the grand total... Oh, you know what? I did have sunglasses. I had some old sunglasses where I took the lenses out to put in the helmet. So there's some pieces I had on hand, but my out-of-pocket was $70 for this costume, which is actually less than I usually spend. I'm happy about that. The time. I don't even know how to begin calculating the time. I started October 3rd. I finished October 28th. I worked every single one of those days, weekends, you know, at least a couple to a few hours every night. Uh, so, I mean, that is potentially, I say that's easily 60 hours, probably. And that's probably on the conservative side. I mean, that's, that's assuming two hours a day, which I think I definitely did two hours a day. Did I do three hours a day? Was it 90 hours? Certainly could have been. Certainly could have been that much. So let's go through all the pieces. I'm going to start top down. The helmet. I really like how this came out. You know, the horns look great. I love how they're a little gnarled, like a little kind of rough looking, because I think this should be. I did not weather anything. I planned to weather. I did not. I love the sunglasses for the lenses so you can't see the eyes. I love how this came out. The hammered metal paint has a really nice texture, nice finish. A lot of times, if you just fire to spray it silver, there's no texture to it. It's just very silver, very fine. It looks like a plastic toy, and I don't like that. This has a nice texture. Still, I'd like to have weathered it. You know, just get some black and some of these creases and crevices, because it just, it adds some highlights and lowlights. I thought about dry brushing some silver on the edge of these horns. Didn't get to it. So, a few things that I don't love about this. Through heating it in preparation for paint, a few different things, there are just some of these gaps that I had contact cemented. They opened up. And I really wish they had not opened up. Some of them stayed closed. Like there's some of these gaps look really nice and tight. Some of them opened up. And what I should have done is either gone back, contact cemented it and try to push them tight or taken acrylic caulk and gone over these gaps to get them nice and tight. It's just, it looks a little rough, especially across the crown of the head. Those gaps, they look a little rough. And so there's a couple ways to do it. I mean, some of these places contact cement did not open up. Some places it did. I think that's just, sometimes heating it can make that glue open up. But I don't know. I love it. I absolutely love it. I debated on whether to cut the jaw. The reference photos, the jaw is cut off. Didn't know if I wanted that. Didn't know if I could have it come out looking good, but I did, and it looks great. And the helmet, the helmet is always one of the crucial parts. One of the things people see first, so I like to get that right. Second, the curious. So this was a complicated piece. There are just a lot of moving pieces. This, these little rib pieces that are spiked. I didn't really like those at any point in the build until... I kind of painted it and they were done. Because when you wear this, this thing curves a little bit so they flay out a little bit. It looks a little bit better. It's all foam. Uh, I'd never really done these spikes. And I think part of the trick to that is to not make it a sharp point. It's about an eighth inch tip on the end. It's flat. It makes things a little bit easier. I planned to... All this black should be burgundy. Didn't have time to paint the burgundy. And it makes it tough because I had to tape it out, which I didn't do a great job, granted. But... I can't, I wouldn't have sprayed the burning on because all these little spikes in the way. So I'd have had to hand paint it anyways. That's part of the reason I did not do a great job taping out on the front. Didn't tape out at all on the back. Because I thought, you know, as I was doing the front, I realized I'm going to have to hand paint this. Just never got to it. Thought about 
trying to go back and doing some of this black just to get some uh, detail, to get some contrast. I didn't. It gets a little rough. You can see right in here, I transition from craft foam to nothing. And so I just lack that detail. These spine pieces, I couldn't really tell from my reference photos what they should look like. I think this is a great approximation. I actually really like how it came out, but with no burgundy or black or anything to make them stand out, they just blend in, which I hate because they are some neat detailed pieces. The head opening is a bit too small. Like it is tough to get on. Uh, wasn't sure what the sleeves were. This is just gray wool. Again, the burgundy would have made that pop a little bit more, but I did take it on the belt sander, make the edges a little ragged. And it's contact, everything's contact cement. And I kind of, kind of plug welded it. I just cut some holes in the wool and then put contact cement so I get foam to foam glued in. Because with the wool, contact cement's gonna soak into it. It won't really get a good bond. This sleeve is leather. I just had some scrap leather in hand that is contact cemented to the foam. Uh, I really, I mean, I like this. You know, again, it didn't get weathered, so you don't get some of those details. I mean, some of this stuff would've been really nice to add some black so you get some contrast. I mean, the burgundy, it's all very monotone because I didn't get any of the burgundy on there. I just ran out of time. I do have that one spot where I was picking with my fingers at the masking tape that I'd masked and uh, pulled that rubber right off. If I'd used just a pick, that would not have happened. But you know what? I got a little uh, over here and went for it. The gauntlets. I love the gauntlets. I love the spikes on them. They just look really nice, really mean, all foam construction. Again, you have some gapping issues on the inside. I had made the gauntlets with paper templates. And so when I actually tried to put them on, they're way too small. So you see these triangles I've placed in there. That's to widen it so it actually fit on my hand. Then there is a glove piece to the gauntlet. I really, I like that. I used a shell casing to get these circles, these little rivets in there. I thought it came out really well. I was concerned about how the this part would interface with the glove. I didn't want like a big gap like that. So I have an elastic band on the inside of there. The fingers, this is just styrene plastic. Man, those fingers are stuck together. That's funny, I thought contact cement had dried, apparently not. And so I contacted these, I contact cemented these plastic finger armors to this glove. It's just a, like a gardening glove, like one of those cheap dollar store type gloves. Had that on hand. And so the part that's material, contact cement won't, won't bond to that. But this glove has a nylon like gripping coating. And so the plastic contact cements to that quite well. These, this opening just fits right over the gauntlet. And that worked out really well. Like everything stayed in place. The glove has elastic around the wrist so that doesn't want to move or pull off. The elastic on this makes it so this bends a little bit with the glove, which I like. Cause I, just, I didn't want to move my hand down. You see this big gap. You see all the details that uh, display that this is not not legit. You know, this is just a costume. Both gauntlets, both sides are the same. So I need to curious as I was building this, I thought, you know, there's some like armor and padding around the waist that I was like, ah, I don't want to do that. I just, great t-shirt will be fine. As I got towards the end, I thought, you know, that's not going to be fine. And especially when the costume, I thought I was going to paint it burgundy. Well, this padding is burgundy. We can take that away if I just have gray. There's not a lot of burgundy on the curious. It's really the legs and just this part of the curious, just a few little areas. I thought, well, I need that padding so I can paint it burgundy. Didn't paint anything burgundy. This is craft foam. So I usually get it in 12 by 18 sheets. Well, ran out of that. And it was the day before I wanted to finish this, so I had to go by Walmart. All I had was five inch by eight inch sheets, quite a bit smaller. So I really had to piece this together a little bit different than I normally would have. Ran out of plastic dip the night before. So I kind of got a very thin coat on this. I just sprayed it with black paint on top of that and it came out okay. You can see my Velcro on each end because I wrapped this and then I have a piece around the back that just Velcros to it to hold it in place. The curious fits over it. Uh, you know, it's not the best fit, but it works out okay. This is the back piece. A lot of nice little detail in here. You know, weathering, black weathering would not have helped this much, but you know, I've gone, I would not have gone silver dry brushing over this, thinking about it, because this is more of a cloth, a soft part, so you know, the silver dry brushing for edges, that's for metal, for the curious, for the helmets, some of those things. Uh, so this, as after I put it on the first time, I had somebody kind of trace behind it where the Velcro should have gone, because where I put it, not exactly where it should have gone. It could have fit a little bit better. The belt, I really like how the belt came out. So in the reference photos, there's no kind of belt buckle. It just is the seamless uninterrupted uh, vertical pieces. Well, I need a buckle. I mean, I'm a human being, I'm not a big game picture, so I need some kind of buckle. So I did a tri-glide 
And then I just have this buckle that is of my own design that kind of fits the, fit, uh, the costume and it velcros over just to cover the triglide. I love these spikes on the front. They came out really nice. Again, that's just foam, contact cemented to the leather. And it really it just, it's a nice detail for this costume. The back should have had spikes. Didn't add it because we're running out of time. Didn't want to have to worry about sitting on the spikes and not being able to see them and you know catching them on stuff. So I didn't do it. And the belt is just nylon webbing. And I've glued craft foam on the front and back to create these webbing to kind of create a sandwich. Because I wasn't sure, again, the belt's nylon. So contact cement's not going to stick to it very well. But it will, contact foam, contact cement will stick to the foam on the front and back. Leather, contact cemented to it. Leather will contact cement very well. Move down to the leg. So I have this thigh armor. This is the back plate of it. I made the inside flat, just ease of use. It's got these little, I guess, fake rivet things, which craft foam. I used shell casing to get the right size, as close as I could get it. So these things, they should be a little up higher. They kept sliding down. I really didn't account for that. I just I was trying to rush through this thing, didn't get to it. So how I was wearing it, why I did wear it, was that I would have this sit on top of the knee armor which you'll see in a minute and that way they kind of stay up otherwise they slide down to where this was at the top of my knee and this was just way too low i do have right and left uh, so these what's black should have been burgundy if i was taking it the full distance if i had the time didn't have the time the knee armor and the shin guards i really like how these came out i mean these spikes this is just craft foam and you can see the seam on the bottom Kind of a quick way to do it, but I knew that no one's going to see it from that angle from the bottom. So from the top, they just like these look like these conical spikes, and I like that. They just wrap, it wraps around my leg. On the inside is Velcro on each side. It pulls it together. So the knee, I glued it all the way around to this thing. I wish I had maybe worn it just in the front because this thing needs to flex a lot more to close it than the knee does, and it just kind of creates this weird situation where it wants to open up. Uh, but I like that. It just it looks mean. I really like it. The shoes. So the shoes, these are just slip-ons that slip over my tennis shoes. Have a spike in the back, like the Wild Hunt King. The big problem, well, overall the armor, it didn't weather any of it. It looks nice. Like these just look so kind of plain. You notice the armor is over, over, over on this side, and then it's under, under, under on this side. I just screwed up. Uh, like one of these middle pieces, I glued backwards, and it caused me to have to. Flip it to, sorry, because I didn't want to rebuild it. Didn't have time to rebuild it. Please do slip over my shoes. They're not, you know, they don't hold in place the best, but they are good enough. And last is the sword. So I usually don't make weapons for costumes. For one, you know, some places you go, they don't like super realistic looking weapons. Two, usually I'm so focused on the actual costume itself, I just don't have time to do a weapon. But I really wanted this sword. It is four and a half feet uh, end to tip. I just, you know, it's just such a nice prop. It is PVC base, foam over top, and I like it. It, just, it creates such a nice image. You know, when I'm just Wild Hunt King and I walk with this huge sword, it's a great effect. So the sword is very, very rough around the edges. Uh, but again, it's all about the effect. And that is the costume for this year, the Wild Hunt King. It was, it was a lot of fun making it. I do wish I had just a little bit more time if I'd had some time to weather it. I'd, weather's kind of the most fun part when you you know make this stuff look used, make it look like it's been in battle. You know, I, I thought from the beginning that I was going to battle damage it and that hides some of these issues, some of these seams, some of these parts that don't look the best. Like, oh, I battle damage it and that can hide a lot of that. Well, ran out of time, did battle damage, didn't battle damage it, didn't weather any of it. And weathering is just spreading some black paint on it and then wiping it off. And that black paint's going to collect in the crevices and the cracks and the hard-to-reach areas and it just gives it kind of a dirty look. And I, I want that stuff to look like it's been used, like that the Wild Hunt King has been on the battlefield and he's just come back from the battlefield and it's just grimy and somebody hadn't washed the armor yet. But it just didn't get there. The day before, I just, I'd rather be done with it. You know, I knew that my self-imposed deadline was coming. Yeah, I just, and I didn't want to work out on it all the way up to Halloween. I wanted the weekend free and clear, which I did get that. And for most people, this costume... It's gonna, they're going to find it scary. They're not going to know who it is. That's fine. I just I like the look of it. And it, it serves its purpose. I mean, no no most 99% of people I see are not going to be like, oh, you know, all that black should be burgundy. They don't care. It doesn't matter. The weathering, they don't care. That's fine. This is the costume. It does take a bit to get into it. But a lot of these costumes I make usually do. Is it my favorite costume I've made? No, it's not. Probably the Mandalorian is just such a crowd favorite. And that, that was a fun one. 
probably feel like I locked in my skills of foam making and weathering and painting all that stuff. Twisty the Clown. That is just such a, you get such a strong reaction wherever you go for that. You know, just people are afraid. People are like to flock to it because they want pictures with it. That one's a big crowd pleaser. Uh, so that's up there. I made a Ghostbuster costume, you know, Pete Bateman, a long time ago, made the Proton Pack. It is, like, off the blueprints, very legit, made of MDF, quarter-inch MDF, so it's very heavy, but it looks really legit. I mean, there are a few issues I had. I, I did not get the electronics for the pack itself. I do have electronics for the wand, but not the pack, the lights on the pack, because it was back ordered when I was doing it in October, so I only have, I had the lights for the wand. I had the sound for the pack, you know, it makes all the sound, plays Ghostbusters. Really cool. That's a very expensive build, I mean, because I went all out buying, you know, as close to accurate parts as I could. Uh, that's a different story. The Wild Hunt King. Great costume. It's a lot of fun. Uh, I'm going to have, you know, uh, last year I did Scorpion and just with everything going on, pandemic, all that stuff, I did not get any good pictures. Usually I try to kind of create a photo shoot just so I have like a good picture to remember the costume by. Didn't do that Scorpion. Could go back and do it. I don't know. It feels a little weird to go back and do it now. But I will get some photos of this because I want just some really nice, you know, photo shoot type things because I like having that one final image with the costume and I need that with this one. These are all the sketches and drawings and templates I created while making this costume and trying to figure out the sizes of different pieces and parts. So the costume is done. I've worn it once. It's time to wear it again. And I'm just going to show you the process of what it takes to put it on. The first time I did it, there was some putting things on, taking them off, because they're just, there needs to be a kind of an order. So I'm gonna try to get that right. We will see, I may end up having to take things on and off, but this is the process. I'll probably have, I'll probably have to end up speeding this up because it's gonna take a while. Alright, so a couple observations after having gotten to wear this for an extended amount of time. The main issue is my belt is too loose. Now, when I made the cummerbund, initially I was going to attach it to the belt, try to hold all that together. I forgot to put a split in the middle, and I ended up not attaching the belt. So the belt keeps slipping down, and so that you see just the area of my shirt and pants between the bottom of the cummerbund and the top of the belt. That's an issue. Uh, getting the belt walk on is really fiddly just with what that is. I wish I could make the belt tighter. I really made it to where it's as tight as I'm making it. It's still too loose. If the cummerbund attached to the belt, that would help. The cummerbund keeps wanting to like ride up underneath the armor, which just doesn't help anything. The thigh armor, I thought that would just maybe tension fit, maybe kind of sit on the top of the shin guards. It doesn't, it goes down behind them, down past them. It would be nice to maybe attach those with just some nylon strapping to the belt, which that would exacerbate my belt. Slipping problem, uh, the belt just really needs to be tighter. I was thinking I've done some kind of elastic. That'd be tough just for these vertical posts that leaves very little room for adjustability. Uh, so if I were gonna try to improve upon this costume, I think thigh armor needs to be attached to the belt and have to be Velcro because I wouldn't be able to put thigh armor and belt on. It'd just be a little fiddly to put it all on at the same time. 
Feel like I'm giving me a little bit of adjustability as far as the height of the thigh armor. Belt needs a bit to get tighter. I need to cut some of these posts off so I can cinch it tighter. I really need to attach the cummerbund to the belt just with the glue so that that is all one unit. The cummerbund, if I did that, probably needs to be a little tire, higher because it really just is underneath. Hey, Scooby Doo. I had my little puppy. The cummerbund really needs to be underneath the armor for a little bit. And if I had it attached to the belt and if it pulled down, I think I potentially would be. Let's see. It's like right now, it's right. I mean, this is where it should be, but it's maybe about an inch or two past it. Uh, but it keeps wanting to ride up. So I don't know, maybe the belt attached to it would help keep it in place. Maybe the thigh armor. I don't know. All that just really needs to be attached. Oh, I need to somehow split the cummerbund. And I meant to do that originally. I just forgot. Uh, this is a very wide. It is hard to walk through doorways with all this stuff off this arm. I have to walk through it sideways. Uh, the helmet's a little tall. And yeah, you got to duck when you go through doorways. All that is fine. The gloves worked out way better than I anticipated. I really thought that these plastic pieces would be popping off. It doesn't. The, it stayed on really well, so I don't have much of an issue with it. Oh, the getting off is another issue. You can see I uh, get a lot of wrinkles here in the elbow just as I move my arm. It wants to bend that piece out, so you get a lot of wrinkles with that. Uh, so the belt buckle, just it's all just for Velcro. I wish I'd made these straps a little bit longer. They're like really just big enough to fit. And so when the belt's on and it's tied tight and you're trying to fiddle with it to get this done, Makes it tough. Maybe what I needed is just a loop that velcros to the belt and then this velcros on top of that. I don't know. Then it'll probably just get ripped off. And then to the belt, this tri-glide. The tri-glide does not stay tight. I don't know if it's because of the metal tri-glide. It doesn't have like the kind of ridges that keep it in place. But it kept loosening up, which is, you know, not ideal. Uh, so yeah, I spent a lot of time like trying to pull everything down and now it's all around. All right, my pants are my ninja pants from Scorpion. There's a little baggy for what this costume is, unfortunately. Uh, the costume, I mean, the back did work pretty well. I was afraid it was a little short. Uh, and the reason it was short when I wore it the other day was that this piece, I put it on backwards. Uh, or not backwards, upside down. And putting it right side up definitely helped. I wish I'd made it a little more adjustable as far as the Velcro. Like, I just have this one narrow strip of Velcro. I wish I'd made a little bit had them going horizontal wider so I could make it a little tighter loose if I needed to because try and get it dead on, not the easiest thing in the world. <sighs> Range of motion is not great in this thing, but that was to be expected. And getting it off, it is rather tight on my head. So this, this Velcro completely detached from the uh, from the leg. And there's another issue is that with this Velcro just right here, it splays out at the top, which makes it really loose. As I wished it would stay together better, which would make my knee guard stay together a little bit better. But instead, this splayed out, knee guard splayed out, so they're very wide and didn't work. But yeah, I don't know. This Velcro, it's adhesive back, but I've always had to contact cement it to the foam because it. That adhesive just, I guess it's just not very good. And usually I do come back cement, didn't that time because time was of the essence. I didn't have a lot of time. And this one too, you know, it just is too much, I guess, stress, 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 and trouble. I just, it doesn't want to stick to that foam. So usually contact cement, I put some on the Velcro, even though it's adhesive, it doesn't matter, still put it on there, put on the foam, and that'll work. You know, this die armor. I really thought it was tight enough for it would tension fit on my leg. Not the case whatsoever. It it just kept sliding. I kept trying to pull it up. Eventually, I was like, you know what? I'm done with that. I'm not going to quit pulling that because it's not doing me any good. Shoe worked out okay. Or the shoe covers. They kept wanting to kind of, instead of be dead on, they'd kind of go off to the side. Don't know why that is. But that was the case. But all in all, is a... Uh, Perfectly cromulent costume. Uh, the people I saw, if you don't know me, they always expect me to do something over the top ridiculous, which of course I delivered on that. Uh, I mean, all in all, I like it. You know, if I was going to wear this again, I would definitely want to tweak it, you know, if I was going to, because there's just a lot of issues with it. A lot of us haven't trying to like adjust it the whole time. And it really is just the belt, the cummerbund, 
and the thigh armor. If I kind of attach all that together, that would solve a lot of my problems. But you know what? I don't know if I'll ever wear this again. Because if I did have to, if I did wear it again, I'd have to fix all this stuff. And I'm not sure I want to fix it. So that may prevent me from wearing it again. I don't know. Anyways, it was a fun car. I mean, there's leather. Plus from that leather is all over my arm. That is it. Erden Brick Glass. The Wild Hunt King. That costume 2022 is done. Lever revisit it. Will I wear it again? I might, because this helmet... I love that helmet. I repurpose that into another costume. Or not repurpose it. I've never repurposed any of my costumes. I have them all. A lot of them I don't do anything with. But I have them just in case. Because you never know when you might need a costume. But Halloween 2022 is in the books. We are done. Next year. What I want to be this year is the Grim Reaper. So I'm thinking I'm be the Grim Reaper next year. Because I want to put my own little spin on it. I have a lot of ideas. And I really want to implement them. And that one's going to be a little bit easier. A little bit easier to move around. Because it's going to be... Yeah, you got the Grim Reaper cloak. I'm going to do a little bit of armor, but limited to where it does not inhibit my mobility. And, I mean, getting a car with this thing on is, it is some effort. So I want to make that easier. But I also want to try to, you know, go for a little creeper. I want to do some light. I want the eyes to light up. I want to have it adjustable. Uh, I've done LEDs. I can wire those up. But I've never had them adjustable, so I had to figure out what's the best way to do that. But that's got a year to worry about that.